Web psychology is about understanding how and why we behave online the way that we do. So uh, we apply behavioral research to describe the behaviors that you see on websites and platforms and products and apps and things. So when you're looking at why people behave online the way that they do, it's important to look at motivation. And one of the ways in which to do that is to use kind of metaphorical models that are based in science to help us understand these things. So the one that I like to use is the three brain model, which is based off of the triune brain research. So you have the primal, emotional, and rational systems. So the primal is around things that keep you safe and alive, so things like um, assessing whether your environment is going to be risky or safe, if it's going to be um, a source of food, good source of sex, things like motion encourage activation in the primal system. The second system, the emotional system, is much more to do with empathy, with mirror neurons, with uh, storytelling, facial cues, reading and, and trust, and body language. And then the rational system is much more about post-rationalizing the decisions that we've made at a primal and emotional level. So making people feel like they've made a good decision for signing up or giving them research and uh, information they need to feel like they've made the right choice. The reason it's important and useful to use this model to explain online behaviors is that if you understand how we react to things online, you can then design experiences using that information to make sure that you're getting the outcomes that you want to enable people to have a better experience. When you're looking at uh, using and applying web psychology principles specifically within the health industry, it really helps to understand which motivations are most effective to trigger. So if we look at things like risk and health, uh, making sure that people know that there's going to be an immediate impact, a concrete impact on their health if they take a particular action, that's going to be a lot more persuasive. If you're then able to use a story of one person who's very similar to them to tell the narrative of the benefit that they've received and the journey they've been on, that's going to engage the person's emotional system. And then with the rationale, if you enable them to have access to the information to feel like they've made, they're making an educated choice, again, that's going to help reinforce positive behavior. So if I were to give two top tips to people wanting to apply this stuff now, so actions they can take, uh, one would be to use social proof, and the other would be uh, to use the before and after principle. So social proof you see quite a lot now in hotels, this idea that if you want people to take um, an environmentally friendly behavior, you could say, uh, Everyone who stays on this floor, 90% of them turn their taps off when they're finished with them, for instance. So you could do the same in medicine. You could say, uh, in your town, 90% of people actually finish their medications. Fine. The other one, before and after, you could say, um, this is Jo, she's similar to you. This is what her life was like before she took the medication. This is what it looked like after. So again, there's that contrast, and it's concrete, and there's a narrative that the person can, can read for themselves. So those are probably two of the principles that I would suggest you start with.